Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I wanted to have a little bit of a discussion with you today, a little bit of a chat, and pose a question. Do you think living off social media is the next luxury status symbol? This is something that I've personally been thinking about for the last few weeks. Today's video, I basically just wanted to talk about this article that I came across and share with you my thoughts on my social media use and just society social media use in general. And I'd love to hear your thoughts. Do you think that you are spending more or less time on social media the older you get? I'd really love to hear from you in the comments down below because just from a personal standpoint, I definitely feel like I am spending less time on social media than I ever have before. And it's just kind of ironic because I feel like there is so much more to be consumed on social media than ever before, but it's almost like I'm stepping away from it. I mean, other than Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat, we now have threads. We just have so many social media platforms to choose from. But I have been growing increasingly and increasingly more intrigued by this idea of spending less time on social media. And please let me know in the comments down below where you sit and how you're feeling right now, because Sometimes I wonder like, is it an age thing or is it just a personal thing? Because I don't really necessarily know if it's just an age thing because I do know of people who are my age and older who still spend the same amount of time, if not more time on social media and are sharing more. But at this kind of stage of life that I'm in right now, I privated my Instagram account Oh God, like maybe three, four weeks ago. Having my Instagram private just felt like people that I have now on social media, we're in this little hub together. It just feels weirdly like more personal and private. I'm at this place at my life right now and who knows, maybe I'll change. Maybe I'll change my mind at some point. But in the place I am right now, I feel weirdly a lot better the less I'm on social media. I'm happier the less time I spend on social media and the less I'm on social media, the happier I am. I'm gonna share with you a specific article today that I will have linked down below if you wanna read it in its full and in its entirety. And that article is 29 Celebrities Who Reject Social Media and Why. And I wanted to kind of dissect this with you today because I never thought that I would <laughs> feel like I could relate to celebrities and that's something I never thought I would say. But I'm really intrigued by some of their responses and some of their reasons why. And I'd love to share them with you and I'd love to hear your thoughts on it in the comments down below. And I'm probably not gonna run through all 29 of them because 29 is a lot and it is quite a large number, but I'm actually quite shocked about the amount of celebrities that aren't on social media. The first one that's listed here is Kira Knightley. And for her, her extremely brief foray into social media proved too much too fast. She quoted, I did actually join Twitter for about 12 hours because I tried to be down with the kids and it just creeped me out. Colin Firth, um, Brad Pitt is on this list, Scarlett Johansson. And she was actually quoted saying, I can't think of anything worse. I'd rather do less than have to continuously share details of my everyday life. Scarlett Johansson emphasized to Interview Magazine in 2011 about her dislike of social media sharing. In 2023, she told this Skinny confidential him and her, I can't. My ego is too fragile, my brain is too fragile, I'm a delicate flower. She added, I had Instagram once for three days and when I started realizing that I'd spent 20 minutes looking at somebody's Instagram page who worked for a friend of mine, I now know you have a pit bull and two daughters and you live in like Burbank. I felt so bad, like I was missing out on this random person's life. I think I've always really been fascinated by the Olsen twins. I grew up. Uh, watching the Olsen twins and their movies and I had their dolls and I, I love their TV shows and even they are very very reclusive they are very very private and Elizabeth Olsen, which is their sister, she's not even on social media either. Their reason for not being on social media is they say that they've spent their whole life trying to not let people have that accessibility, so it would go against everything we've done in our lives. They also noted that it gives them anxiety and double down on the stance in the following years. And I definitely think that their, their very young introduction into Hollywood and into fame has just made them so against everything that social media probably stands for and the level of accessibility and almost the, it's almost like social media gives people what feels like a right into knowing your life and they have the right to know intimate details about your life. And I think the Olsen twins have just had about enough of it. Christian Stewart's actually in this article as well and I'm just gonna read her little spill. Simply put, Christian Stewart finds social media annoying. It's like you're trampling on someone's life without any regard. Everyone can do it now. Buy a camera and you're a paparazzi. Mila Kunis is also someone who doesn't have social media and she's claimed to say she's just not interested in giving people a play-by-play -play of her day, which is actually how I feel. I just don't think people need to know when I'm going to the restroom. What am I gonna tweet? Like, hey, now I'm moving from room to room. I don't really know what I would tweet. 
she shared on a late night show with Craig Ferguson. Um, people like Eddie Murphy also don't have social media. Kate Moss as well, the famous supermodel. She has no personal social media accounts. And back in 2017 for the Sydney Morning Herald, she explained why. She said, the whole modeling scene is completely different to when I first started out. Everything now is so instant with digital photography and there's no mystique, she said. I don't have any personal accounts on social media. I'm just not into posting about personal stuff online, which I actually can really respect. Chris Pine also keeps it incredibly simple when it comes to social media. I kind of feel like I'm simplifying down. I just like the simple. I just like the non-complicated. I don't want to be connected so much. And I think it's really interesting because I feel like we're kind of, maybe not everyone, but I do feel like this pendulum is kind of swinging in the opposite direction. And we, it's almost like we've become so connected that we almost crave that disconnection from the the falseness because it's not really authentic connection is it it's not what we truly crave as humans we need face-to-face -face interactions and and more genuine connection parasocial relationships are not genuine connections and they're not really sustaining and fulfilling connections sandra bullock is one that i was super surprised of i actually didn't know that she didn't have social media sandra bullock was actually quoted saying we're not representing our lives truthfully i will not take a selfie that i can't erase i don't post or do any of that stuff bullock told uk's the times about her decision to stay away from twitter instagram and the like and i actually agree with sandra <laughs> not let me talk like i'm mentioning her name like we're on a first name basis we are not representing our lives truthfully and i believe that videos, a lot of the photos that we're seeing on YouTube, on Instagram, are very beautiful, are very aesthetically pleasing, and they're made to make us feel a certain type of way. But I don't believe that a lot of what we're seeing online is a true representation of our lives and of who we truly are and of how we truly live, you know? And it's it's no it's no secret, it's no like big surprise. I'm not dropping new information here, but we're not sharing the worst parts of our lives. I mean, most of us aren't. Like, if you go to some areas of Instagram and TikTok, you will see women full on breaking down, crying, having mental breakdowns on the internet. But for the most part, you do not see the bad parts of someone's lives. The influences that you're watching, the vlogs that you may watch on YouTube, that is only a small fraction of that person's life. There are things going on in my life that I don't share. I, I will not share certain parts of my life. I've got, let me count. I've got three major situations happening in my life right now that are causing me so much inner turmoil and are stressing me out to the max. But I'm not gonna show you that, am I? I'm not gonna show you that. People are not going to show you that. And I'm not telling you that to have a pity party and to gain sympathy, but I'm just letting you know that every single person that you are watching on social media, that you are, you know, thinking, oh my God, their life looks amazing. There are things happening in that person's life that maybe they're having a hard time with, maybe they're struggling, maybe they're going through a rough patch. I can guarantee you that the people that you're watching online, the people that you may be envying online, wishing that you had certain aspects of their life, I can guarantee you that their life is not perfect. As much as it looks perfect in this little perfectly edited video, photo, whatever that you're watching or, or seeing, I can guarantee you it's not perfect. Kate Blanchett is also somebody that doesn't have social media. And I wanna read this to you because I was a little bit like, whoa. Okay, she doesn't understand grown ass people's obsession with social media. I cannot for the life of me work out why adults are participating in that she told Yahoo. So Kate Blanchett isn't mincing words, okay? She has some beef with social media and she's not going to tiptoe around it and she's gonna be honest. So she doesn't understand grown ass people's obsession with social media. Jake Gyllenhaal, which God, I'm sure that made the whole all too well 10 minute version a hell of a lot easier. Apparently, if he's really being honest, social media essentially terrifies him. During an interview with USA Today, he explained, no one is looking up. I take that seriously. I think it's saying something really important and a little scary. And you know what? I kind of agree with him. No one is looking up. The amount of times I go to restaurants and I just see couples on their phone, I found myself driving by a school. All the kids were exiting the building and walking down the streets to either get on public transport or get in their cars or walk home. And I was actually deeply, deeply alarmed with I was counting, I was counting how many kids weren't on their phone and like 99% of the kids that were exiting the school building were like this. And it just actually made me so sad because it was, it was so different to how I grew up. I mean, I was at school when everyone had phones, but it was nowhere near as bad as it is today. And it really makes me quite sad. When asked why Emma Stone doesn't give into social media, she said it was very much like a modern version of keeping up the Joneses, 
it's that need to be liked, that need to be seen, that need to be validated in a way through no one that you know. And so people ask the question about fame or what it feels like and it seems like everybody knows what that feels like. It seems like everyone's cultivating their lives on Instagram or on different forms of social media and what pictures looks best of their day. Kate Winslet takes the toll social media has on girls and young women's confidence very seriously. It has a huge impact on young women's self-esteem because all they ever do is design themselves for people to like them. And what comes along with that? Eating disorders. And that's what makes my blood boil. And it's the reason we don't have any social media in our house, she told the Sunday Times. If you have a chance to check out this article, I highly recommend, like I said, I'm gonna have a link down below, but I'm going to go back to what Emma Stone said about it's that need to be liked, that need to be seen, that need to be validated in a way through no one that you know. And you know, you could actually make the argument that a lot of celebrities maybe don't feel the need to be on social media because they are loved and adored and validated and seen on the big screen. And also, you know, imagine whenever you leave your house or, you know, not even be able to really leave your house or not really being able to go to the grocery store or be able to do normal day to day things without having a lot of the time men, paparazzi, taking photos of you, unflattering photos of you, photos of you just trying to do your day-to-day -day things. And that's what I think is super interesting about the society we live in is, I guess these celebrities, a lot of them kind of shy away from social media because they have that burden that they carry. Whereas us everyday individuals, I mean, I can't really speak to that so much. I'm not as much into it as I used to be, but you know, we have friends, our boyfriends, we have these little paparazzi sessions, whether they be in our house or out in the real world, you know, at the grocery store or at the mall or at the beach where we get our friends or our boyfriends to take photos of us and pose and, and you hit the right angle to post these photos online. And I do wonder if it has a lot to do with the fact that these celebrities are famous, that they feel the need to not have that validation coming in as much because they, they are on the big screen. But then I don't know if really you could make that argument because there is a lot of celebrities who do share their lives on social media and do post heavily to social media like the Kardashians. But I'd really love to hear what your take is on this and what you think about this. And I do wonder if Gen Z will lead this. I'll be really interested to see if Gen Z being really the first generation that has grown up with social media the most if they're going to be the ones that are going to lead this pushback the most. Because as someone who, you know, I'm a millennial and I've lived with social media for quite a number of years, but I'm kind of getting to a point now where I'm a little bit tired of it. And I wonder if Gen Z, they will feel that burden a lot more. And, you know, we're seeing things with Gen Z. The statistics are out that Gen Z are drinking less. They are the generation that are drinking less. And they're also, I think, the generation that is turning away from birth control and kind of looking at alternative measures for birth control. So I do wonder if they'll also be the generation that decide to live life further away from social media, ignoring social media, maybe even living off social media. And I do kind of see it as a little bit of a, I don't know if status symbol is the right word, even though that's what the title says, but I'd love to hear what you think. I do think it's, I'm gonna say for my life, a little bit of a happiness symbol. I don't really post that much online anymore. and. You know, I used to be someone who would post and be on social media while I was out in public. I'd be posting photos. I'd be, I'd be trying to share my life on social media and share what a great time I was having. Whereas now I, when I'm having a great time, I'm having a damn great time. And if I want to share it to my social media accounts, I'll wait till I'm at home on the couch and maybe I'll post it then. But I no longer feel the need to live and share updates of my life real time. And to be honest, very rarely even just in general, I. I notice I'm living a lot less on social media and I think it maybe for me is a, a little bit more of a happiness symbol, not so much of a status symbol. I love the ability that it's allowed me to live more in the moment. And I wonder if that's got anything to do with maybe me just feeling like I'm in a better or a happier place or maybe just wanting to live more intentionally and more in the moment. I'm not at all discounting that people probably just share because it makes them happy. They love social media, they love to share. But I do wonder where we draw the line on living in the moment, living intentionally, and kind of where that line stops, where that line is of just oversharing and living in the moment. I'm very fascinated by this. I'm very interested to see 
where our social media usage goes in the future. I really love to hear from you in the comments down below. Please share with me your thoughts. The sun is changing, as you can see. Um, so I'm gonna catch some sun before it disappears because it's very unusual that it's literally the middle of winter and I'm wearing a dress. This is exciting. So I'm gonna get going now. Thank you so much for joining me in today's video. I'm gonna have another one linked to you right here. If you haven't had enough of me just yet, feel free to jump over there. Thank you so much for joining me in today's video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.